the fire's burned down to pretty much just ashes. So now we're going to go ahead and close up the cooker and go ahead and let the cooker start to generate heat. We're going to be cooking at 225 degrees on this thermometer, and this one over here will end up about 200 degrees. In competition, I typically cook bone-in Boston butts. It's, an, it's one of the easiest cuts of meat to find. Get to know your local butcher or find a good butcher at one of your, at one of your local grocery stores. When you can, definitely get your meats in cryovac. I choose to leave the bone-in in mine. Um, there's a little bit of fat cap here. If it was more than, let's say, three-eighths of an inch, I might trim a little bit of it off. This is a, looks like a broken blood vessel here that, you know, isn't going to, isn't going to add in. I don't know if it's going to hurt anything, but it certainly can't add to the flavor of the meat. So we'll just look for, look for stuff like that and cut those out. Um, this one's got a little bit of excess fat right here on the top. These are now ready to be seasoned and go on the smoker here in just a few minutes. I really think that the spice blends are the, are the most important ingredient to really good barbecue. Barbecue is an art, but you also have to understand the science of applying heat to, to food or heat to meat to get it to cook. And I, and I think that you have to understand that. Cook things at the right temperatures, understand that different rubs Different ingredients in your rubs will react different to different temperatures. I've had several different rubs we've used in competition, but this one is really a great combination. What we're going to use today is a, is a combination of a couple of commercially produced rubs that we do under the Cowtown label. These are real similar to the old Oklahoma Joe's products that a lot of people, the backyarders and competition cooks did. Those products aren't available anymore, so we came up with Cowtown. The most important thing is to understand that you need a lot of sugar in your big cuts of meat rubs. People don't understand how much sugar they need to produce really good barbecue. So two parts of the salt and sugar, one part each, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, and paprika, then you've got to have a blending of peppers. I think blending pepper is a real, real important part of barbecue. Any rub that we have here at Oklahoma Joe's or anything I've ever used in competition has black pepper, red pepper, or cayenne pepper, and white pepper in it. All three have distinct characteristics and need to be used. But you're not going to use them in too big a quantity, so maybe only maybe a quarter of a part of each one of the peppers. That's a real good basic rub right there. Add a little bit of some type of a, of a powdered citrus, like a lemon peel, to your brisket rub add cumin or sage to the pork rub. Now it's time to season the product, and one of the things that I like to use is any type of a spray release type of product, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna help that rub stick to my product. And make sure it's extra heavy on the top side, because when, when we put the pork butts on, they're going to be this way. They're going to be this same fat side up, and we're not ever going to we're not ever going to turn them or rotate them or anything in the cooker. The mistake some people make when they're when they're having to add fire every let's say hour or two is they add too late when the fire's already died down, and you've got to add whenever that fire's really hot. That way, it'll you'll get a nice consistent burn temperature. One of the things I like about adding cold charcoal onto hot is all that smoke that's being generated right now. It is a wonderful flavor, so I always add cold charcoal to hot. We've just added the charcoal and we're going to open this back butterfly damper all the way. That's going to allow as much air as possible in there because we do want to go ahead and let that, let that charcoal catch as soon as possible since we want to get it up to temperature within the next half hour. These are ready to go on the cooker now. Our cooker's at 225 degrees over there on that door. Just like we said, we're gonna put the larger brisket onto the competition cooker. And I like to start my briskets and pork butts up in what I'll call the top left of the cooker. And we're gonna take the larger pork butt and do the same thing. And we're gonna put them right up there. And they're gonna be just fine like that for probably a good th two or three hours until that rub sets up and starts to form a crust. We'll get some smoke working with some, add, adding some wood right now. Unless you've got a real small cooker, like a, like a Weber K1000 
kettle or one of the one of the bullet type cookers, um, you don't really want chips. The chips are the chips burn off too quick. One of the biggest mistakes that any amateur or backyard barbecuer makes is they make the mistake of cooking with too much wood. Yeah, I like these real small sticks of wood. Uh, they're perfect for adding flavor. They don't generate too much heat. We've got oak wood, apple wood, cherry, and hickory in there right now. And you can see they're already smoking. And we're going to start our basting procedure, which is really very simple. We fill up a spray bottle with apple juice, apple juice, apple cider, whatever your favorite brand is. I wouldn't use anything that had any added sweetener to it. Apple juice is already plenty sweet enough. And we spray it. We're going to be spraying it probably every two hours up until we wrap the product. The reason that I like using apple juice, it's got a nice mild flavor. Um, it's not going to add any, anything too aggressive to the flavor, but it does also have a nice sweetness. So the more we spray and the more the heat hits it, we're going to get some caramelization of the apple juice, and that's going to give that barbecue three, four, five, six hours down the road. It's going to give us that nice, dark, caramelized look. As we can see, the rub is settled up. It's forming a little bit of a crust there. It's not going to run off. It's still a nice little bright red color. And now's when we're going to spray our apple juice on those. And at this point, we're going to be spraying every hour. And you just almost can't put too much on there. We've been cooking about six or seven hours. We've got a really nice hot fire. But one of the things that I like to do is get in here and, mo and move these coals around. Kind of liven that fire up a little bit. Give it a little more air. The other thing we're going to do is after this six or seven hour period is we're going to open the back of the cooker. And we're going to... We're going to scoop out any of the extra ash that's collected down in the bottom that's not burning anymore. It's part of the science to barbecue that, that not a lot of people understand in the beginning, but if you want to be really good at barbecue, you have to use those internal meat thermometers to understand when your food is reaching what stages of tenderness and moisture and, and all that. The buzzer went off, therefore our brisket has to be at least 193. It says 194 right now. That thing can get annoying after a while. So we're going to go ahead and probe both of the pieces of meat and see where we're at. And we're up in the 195 to 200 range right there. This is where I like to use this big spatula. It's got enough weight to it that it's not going to bend. Also, by using the spatula, we don't run any chance of pulling it across the grates and breaking it open. There's a lot of juice in there that we might need, and we want to keep that steam in there and not lose any of that liquid. And we do the same thing with the brisket. By now, ideally, if we're to cook off, we've got about an hour to an hour and an hour and 15 minutes to when this has to be turned in. We want to let both the brisket and the pork set out of the cooker for about at least an hour before we cut into them or work with them. That allows those juices. What we've done is we've cooked these to an internal temperature of 190 degrees plus. A lot of the juice and all has moved to the outside of the meat and over the next hour we want a lot of that juice and, and, and natural juices in there to move back towards the center of the meat and, and, and be, uh, be a little more consistent product. So we're going to let these sit just like this for about 45 minutes to an hour. Then we'll start unwrapping it and, um, and, and starting to get ready to prepare it. Okay, now we're going to move on to the pork butt. And like I said, that little bit of extra time that we gave it to set is going to help us out a lot. Because unlike the brisket, we've got to work the pork butt with our hands. When we're looking for presentation pieces, we're looking for really tender pieces. We're looking for nice variants in color. You can see we've got a real, well, real nice smoke ring, and we've got the nice juicy meat. We've also got the bark and the, and the smoke ring. And you just kind of break it apart and look for those really nice pieces of pulled pork. The judges are going to be judging based on appearance. We're going to want to get these pieces arranged in a really nice manner that shows off the smoke ring, the succulence of the meat, and makes it look really appetizing. There's no better eating than pulled pork when it comes to barbecue.